Okay, hello everyone. This is the Knuckles with Knuckles in Sonic 2 tutorial. Um, a couple of notes before we start. Firstly, the ideal spin Nash, uh, which you're going to be doing a lot as Knuckles, is um, six taps of A, B, or C. So the way I recommend doing it is to hold your hand over the top of the controller with one finger on each of the buttons and um, do two sweeps of them. So three buttons and then three buttons really quickly. Um, the only time you wouldn't do it that way is if you need a lower speed or if you need um, a little bit of a delay. Uh, the other the other thing I want to point out before we start is that at the start of a stage before uh, you should always wait for Knuckles to fully appear on the screen before you start to mash the buttons otherwise uh, what tends to happen is that you just jump and glide in place and that slows you down. So, with those out of the way, let's get started. So, the first stage is Emerald Hill 1, pretty simple. There's a couple of quick spin dashes you'll do at the start. First thing we're going to look at here is this bridge. So, as you go across this line here, um, what's going to happen is you'll actually get kicked into running mode. Uh, because this is flat ground and then this is a sprite and it'll actually change you to um, to running mode. Now this is okay if this fish is far enough out of the way. Um, now we're going to continue on. Uh, this time I think I wasn't sure so I rolled anyway. Um, then obviously you just jump off that ramp. This jump here is really really tight. You need to go from as close as you can get to the spring here without actually touching it. So if I advance the frames, you'll see just how close I have to get to it. There we go. And then it's a really short tap jump over the spikes here to land on the speed shoes. Now in this ramp, as you collect the third ring, you'll see that I switch to a roll there. Uh, you only really quickly tap down here and then hold right. As you hold right, you're going to land on this. Um, I'm going to. So I actually landed about the middle of the box here. What you're aiming for is to is to hit the left half of this box. If you can manage that, then um, the next bit is you don't have to you don't have to think. You just hold right. But instead, because I hit a little bit too far. You're going to um, see how the there's a little white ball here, just in Knuckles Sprite there. Um, it turns out that actually tells you where you're facing. So you're going to see it quickly turn back for just a fraction of a second, just to make sure they hit that 10 ring box on the ground there. Now. Um, you don't always have to do this, but if you have to hit this spring here, what you want to do is you make sure that you actually tap left very slightly as you go over it. If you don't, then you you hit that corner there and you get stopped. So now we hold right. Um, you can do a jump in this ramp here. Now you can see I still haven't jumped yet. Look how far I am through this loop and I still haven't jumped yet. In Sonic 3, you do if you're going to do a loop jump, you jump from about here and you land about here and you get a ton of speed. For some reason, the loops in Sonic 2 are a bit different. You actually want to jump from almost 9 o'clock. You land down here and that's where all the speed is. I don't know why it's different, but it is. Um, okay, so do the jump there. Jump. Um, that's, that actually should be a full jump, that last one. Um, that maintains your speed slightly better than just doing a short jump and that should complete the stage in 19 seconds. In that case it did. 19 or 20, it doesn't really matter. Um, and we get to spend time waiting for the bonus count up. Uh, start of Emerald Hill 2 um, this time, you absolutely have to hold down as you go across this. 
because this one will always kick you back into um, running mode and you've got no rings so that will just kill you. Um, if we move forward just a little bit uh, just a tiny bit after going past this post you want to jump uh, it actually depends on your speed you, you might even want to jump out here if your speed is low um, just to make sure that you land on this platform here. Uh, so now stand up against the box and do one tap spin dash like that. Uh, quirk of the Sonic games is that when you uh, spin dash again while you're standing right up against the box like that and you carry on this way you will um, go into running mode which is convenient here because if you're rolling you don't get the effects of the speed shoes but if you're running you obviously do. Um, now you see me slow down a little bit just to make sure you see there's only a tiny little gap there. Uh, you just wait for it to open up just enough so that you can run into the gap that it creates. Uh, it is possible to jump into that gap but it's more difficult with knuckles. So I don't do it yet. Okay so we run through here we do some more loop jumps. Um, as you hit that red spring there you should actually let go of right for some reason. Sometimes when you hold right up against that wall, um, it just won't, the spring just won't come out. Uh, here again, similar to the last one, um, time the jump just after going past the post. You can actually jump from the post and it'll still work. So from about here, you want to jump, then you should hit this monkey enemy here. Um, Tap left just as you hit it. You can see I'm facing left again. Um, roll as you hit the ground here. And then tap left again as you go over the, um, the 10 ring box. And what that will do is it will mean you just get yourself underneath those spikes. So now obviously you switch back to holding right. Um, as we come up to these spikes here, you can see a slight little ramp in the ground here. Uh, you want to jump from there, you also want to um, slow down, you want to break just a little bit because it will improve your angle uh, and make sure you hit this tunnel neatly. So as we continue on you can see I'm facing left again and I hit that tunnel cleanly. So roll through the, roll, yeah, roll through the shield box. Um, now jump as soon as you hit the ground and one thing you can do to improve your chances of getting a jump at the right time is to mash all three buttons instead of just one but um, space them out slightly so that you basically give yourself three chances at the jump because they're hitting on three separate frames and then you end up here uh, you want to just catch just the earliest bit of that ramp because everything up here is solid so there's a wall over, over there as well and if you hit that wall side on obviously you'll stop so that's no good either um, this is this is the way you want to go through uh, and then you just stand up against the right side of this arena until now as this line here on Robotnik's Egomatic comes into line with this line on the drill, that is when you switch to holding left. Watch as I advance frames. So right there, that's when we switch to left. And then just as you go over this bump in the ground, this one here, just as you go over that, we're going to switch to rolling. Uh, now, you basically just want to stay in line with that front wheel. Um, after you hear four hits, uh, just line yourself up here. And that glide I do just for timing, just so I know when the right time to jump is. Uh, so do a mid-size jump here, bounce on him twice, um, you should not move right, you shouldn't touch the right button until after you've got that sixth hit. 
So now what's going to happen is I'm going to move to the right. I'm going to wait on my glide until I'm right near the ground. So you can see me now sliding in. As soon as you see a Robotnik flash again, you let it go. Do another do an, and do another jump and glide for the last hit. Uh, now from here you now have to hit the capsule. So the best place to jump from is about the middle of these two trees here. Uh, it's it's flat ground which is handy. Uh, so I missed it slightly there, but it didn't matter because I still got 37, which is the target time. Um, let's see here, next is Chemical Plant 1. Uh, for some reason, Chemical Plant 1 is actually missing from my download. What I did was I, um, I downloaded the video from Twitch because my local recording messed up. And for some reason it came to me without Chemical Plant 1. Uh, thankfully there's not much to that level. The first 11 seconds don't actually matter because all you have to do is get to the um, get to the yellow block in time and then at the end there's a loop that you get, well there's three loops that you go through but the third one you need to do a jump out of off a ramp that's actually, um, you actually can't see it but because it's right behind the right pillar of the loop uh, you can use that as the reference point instead, but you have to slow down, otherwise you um, you don't get enough height to get up there in time. Uh, so that's Chemical Plant One. That's a pretty simple stage, and you should get 23 on it most of the time. Um, okay, so Chemical Plant Two. Uh, there's a chance to gain some pretty significant time here over doing it a safe way. So you line up. So you do a spin dash at the start, and then jump, glide here, and stop, and then do another spin dash. And basically what I'm looking for here, in Sierra I've jumped from, I'm basically looking for this cross ramp to appear on the screen. This one here. Um, and basically as soon as it does, I jump. And you can see I've jumped from quite a ways away from that um, from that cross ramp and that's actually worked for me because I land here and carry my momentum to the right. Now this doesn't always happen. There are five possible results here. You can get that happen. You can be you can land on the ground about here and just completely stop. You can land so that you're here so that Knuckles feet are here and he's halfway in the ground. That's a good one as well, because if you hit left, you'll go zipping off this way and get absurd speed through the um, through the loop up ahead, and you can actually make the cycle from this one. Uh, you can get completely embedded in the ground. This one's not so good, because um, if you try and do the same thing as when you're halfway embedded in the ground, um, the door up ahead will actually kill you. Uh, the other thing that can happen is you hit the side instead and you just fall down and this ramp disappears and you just die. Now that one is obviously the worst. Um, but it's worth going for this because of the chance that you'll get this early cycle here. And this lets you get 33s and 34s instead of 39 and 40 which is what you'd get without it. You can do that a fairly safe way where you just um, glide onto the where you just glide onto this platform and land easily but we're going all out here so we carry on we carry on through the loop and we've just got enough time as this opens up now if you do it one of the safer ways the um, this block on the left that's here is up about here and Knuckles can't clear it and and that's um, and then you have to wait for the extra cycle which costs about six seconds so go on here spin Nash okay go through two loops and then we hit 
we get up to this ramp. Now, uh, uh, you'd think that you want to jump from the steepest point, which is about here. Uh, what you actually want to do, you want to jump a tiny bit later. So you can see I've gone from this part of the ground, which is slightly less sloped than this part here. Um, as we as we move the screen up, you can see that I've actually I've actually hit the wall here. Now, if you jump from the steepest point, you actually go straight through here. You don't touch this wall at all, and you end up over here which costs quite a bit of time because as you can see from where I am right now I'm going to go straight up and straight to this booster. Now you get a ton of speed through here but it means that this jump is really tricky. This one here to clear that corner. As you can see I haven't actually cleared it at all. You can't really see it but the bottom of Knuckles Sprite is actually about there. Um, this jump is made easier if you don't hold right all the way across that gap. If you just let go of right as as Sonic would have to to make sure that he didn't kick in the speed cap. If you do it that way, if you think of it like that, then um, that jump is quite easy. And because um, because you don't get stopped, even though you lose a bit of speed coming through the um, coming through the ramps there, uh, you still end up getting 33. But you would get 34 if you stop. The boss is really easy. You just jump at the right time, and that happens. Um, order to get the capsule, you want to jump from. This mark on the ground here, to help you think of it, it's the second one after this gate. Jump to there, and that, as you can see, is a 33, which is the best time you can get for this stage. Um, okay, now we're moving on to Aquatic Room 1. Uh, start of this stage is pretty simple. It's just some easy spin dashes. Uh, this one is a bit strange though. Uh, so firstly, you, you saw that I landed on the ground with a glide. Uh, anytime you do that, uh, unlike in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Knuckles actually has to wait for about a quarter of a second. It's, oh, it is a quarter of a second. It's 15 frames before he can start charging a spin dash. Otherwise it doesn't actually count as him being crouched. So you have to wait until you see a different um, a different sprite. It's slightly different the one from landing from a glide versus crouching down. You have to wait until you see that change in sprite before you can start spin dashing. Uh, this, yeah, so this um, spin dash is a bit strange. That springboard in particular is what does it. Sometimes it'll fling you off like this, and uh, you lose a ton of speed if that happens. And sometimes you'll just get this little flick where you go over this ramp. Um, ideally, you want to hit that ramp because it gives you a bit of speed, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so now we're going to roll through that enemy. And now, this bit is also really tricky. Um, as you can see, you're unsighted as to where the um, as to where the ramps are. But somewhere around here, you can see that there's the water level, and you can see this is the ground. You're right near the water level. Somewhere around here, there is a um, there is a slight up ramp. And what will happen if you hit it perfectly is you'll jump straight over towards the speed shoes. Now I missed it there, and I just land on that instead. Roll into the box jump and glide out. So that's one of the things you can do if you if you get that optimal jump. The other thing that can happen is you actually come onto the box from that angle and you'll get a little bit of a boost out. As soon as you see that you need to grab onto this wall and then climb up and then carry on the same way. Um, okay, moving on. Now there's another tricky jump here that you're unsighted for. 
it involves getting this ramp here. You want you want that particular angle so that you get the maximum effect and you want to you want to make sure that you go through this perfectly because otherwise if you end up hitting this wall here uh, the the path switches are set incorrectly and you can't actually go this way the only way to get around it once you once you're up here and you can tell because you kind of get a little bit stuck in here um, is you you would have to run this way and jump off that ramp back in that direction over the top of the loop or else use one of the bugs that comes up and super glide off it to end up on top of the loop. It, um, it loses quite a few seconds and it looks a bit messy. But if that happens, then you just go straight to the end like that. Uh, ideally, that would have been 21, but 22 is still pretty good. Okay. Aquatic Ruin 2 is pretty simple because it's basically just one long glide. So. What you're going to see is the first few seconds, you you want to try and jump from as late here as you can. You want to try and get an up upward jump here, and then glide so that ideally you actually go through the top of this enemy. You want to go through about here. Um, if you do, then you get the best case with this springboard. Now, from, from where I was, I wasn't actually sure what was going to happen, but I got a really low jump, which helped. Um, now, I wanted, to glide, uh, I wanted to slide up to about here, then quickly jump, and quickly jump again from about, this, from about this part of the ramp, so you get a little bit of height. Then, just as you're about to land on this invincibility box, start a glide. And what that will do is it will cause you to go flying upwards like that. Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky. When you see these rings, you'll have a pretty good idea of where you are. So, what's going to happen with the... Um, yeah, you want there to be about that much of a gap. That's about perfect. If you're slightly lower, then what's going to happen is you're going to hit the, um, the platforms up ahead. Uh, I'll show you which platforms. These ones here. You actually end up hitting this one and running. And because what's going on with the glide here is it's actually steadily increasing speed. So gliding ends up being the fastest way to get to the end of the stage. But if you lose the last bit of that, then you're losing the most speed. So that costs you quite a bit of time if that happens. Now, if you're actually slightly higher than that um, on the on the super glide, um, you want to pull back just a little bit so that you don't hit this platform or... run into the side of this pillar. If that happens, that kills all your glide's momentum, unfortunately. So we don't want that to happen either. But we end up getting the perfect height through the platforms and under the pillar. Now, all we got to do is hold this until we get to the boss. Now, the way we tell when we get to the boss is that the screen is going to... Um, Knuckles is going to shift position on the screen to the right. And as soon as you see that, you then let go of the glide, drop onto the ground facing left. Now again, you've got to wait the 15 frames before you can spin dash here. Uh, that's really important because obviously you don't have a lot of time to get up onto these stone towers as they appear. Uh, now all you've got to do is do timed spin dashes from the top of this platform. Um, there is something that can happen if you get this last hit just right. If you uh, get it just as he starts swinging the hammer, he will um, he will fly off straight away, and the screen will will instantly start scrolling towards the capsule. 
and that saves about three seconds when it happens, but it's frame perfect, so it's not reliable. Um, okay, so finally we're looking at this ramp here, just in front of that stone pillar. Jump off and land on capsule. That gives us 40 seconds. Um, okay, that's quality crew two done. Um, okay, Casino Night 1, bit tricky, easy to lose time if it goes wrong. Um, so, quick spin now, she at the start. As soon as we move off this ground and start on the flat ground, we do a really short, short as possible tap jump to get stuck behind this speed shoe box. And again, like in um, like in Emerald Hill 2, one tap spin Nash, and this time you want to immediately jump. Like that. Uh, land on the conveyor belt, jump again. Land on this, jump again. And now as soon as you see this blue block, it started moving. So, what we want to do is get there as fast as possible to start its cycle and then from here we just wait for it to come down. Now uh, grab onto the left wall first, now you should only be holding up and then jump glide, jump glide. Now on this third jump we switch to holding right. Then we let it go again so that we don't run into this bumper. Only once we go past the bumper do we then start holding right again. Uh, then we land on this flipper, flip it up, um, about here, yep. So that you just clear all of these bumpers. Uh, then we want to jump from about where that, we want to jump, uh, do a full jump from about where that uh, item box is. Uh, this is actually much easier with Knuckles than it is with Sonic, because if you do a full jump through here with Knuckles, it perfectly goes straight through all of these bumpers. Try it with Sonic, and you'll just um, you'll just fall down, and that's really bad. You really don't want to fall down there. Uh, so carry on. Uh, jump here as late as possible, again from the flat. Uh, you should hit this wall. But that's fine. There's a, there is a blue block coming from up here, but it won't reach you in time. Hold right, carry on. Um, should probably clear that. Uh, again, here from the flat, not from the ramp. Jump from as late as possible on the flat. Uh, if you jump off the ramp, what's likely to happen is you end up on the flipper, and you then have to flip yourself back up. Actually, it doesn't cost that much time. As long as you notice it straight away. Again, from as late as you possibly can, try and jump from the 10 ring box so that you get underneath this ceiling. And again, it should only be a very low jump. Uh, so, jump, land on one of those last two bumpers, it doesn't matter which one, um, and you'll land here. Now, as soon as you land here, another very, very short jump. And as soon as you can see where this platform ends, as soon as you go past it, past that line there, do a glide and drop. Now what we're aiming for, you can see as we fall, so I've actually slightly missed it here, but what you're trying to do is go right in between those two bumpers. So I should have been slightly further right. So I hold this spring most of the way down, so probably in between those last two, um, the in between those last two lines like that is when you should release. Jump, glide, spin, dash, done. Uh, that can go to 26 if you get that um, drop at the end. Uh, now the next stage has Knuckles' biggest exploit in the game, uh, and it's very, very finicky. 
So thankfully TNT came out with this method that removes a lot of the finickiness from it. So instead of doing a spin dash to start, we do two full jumps, land underneath this bottom bumper, one more, then spin dash. After hitting the spring, we hold right. So start holding right about here, go across here, um, and then jump another full jump here off this platform. And the objective is to do what I just did there. You want to glide. You want you want to tap the button to glide just as you're about to break this box. And what will happen if you do it correctly is that you'll actually appear to be halfway inside the box grabbing the wall. Well, there's actually two things that can happen here. Either that, or you'll just drop down next to the box. Um, either of those are okay, but if you see this, uh, you quickly want to tap down so that you drop off it like that. Now, at the moment, you're facing left. That's no good. We don't want to be facing left. Uh, but it's again, this is where it gets very finicky. We now have to tap right for either two or three frames. Now, two or three frames in a 60 frame game is a very, very light tap of the button, but it also can't be one frame. Uh, if you do if you do the wrong length of button press here, you don't have enough speed to get the zip later on. So quickly tap right and then spin dash. That'll break the speed shoe box and drop you downwards. Now uh, you'll see you'll see that I stop in the in the ground there. Once you see that, two more spin dashes without touching left or right yet. And then once you've done those two spin dashes, you press right. Now there are five frames at which you can stop holding right and you will get a level wrap. First two of them are the first two frames as you appear out of the wall. And Knuckles is roughly there and there in each of them. Um, as you can see, I'm well past that. There are, however, another three further back, as just as Knuckles goes off the screen. I'm probably past them now. Um, so what I do when I'm doing that is I pause. I pause the game and I say, okay, if I hit either one of those first two frames, I let go of right entirely. If I'm past those two frames, then I kind of have to guess because it's too, it's too close to the window to hold right and tap start two more times. If I do that, I'm going to miss the other window as well. So what I need to do is hold right, unpause, and then release right as soon as possible and just hope it works. And that's what happened to me here. It did actually work. Okay, now, at the moment I'm not pressing anything, but as soon as I see that checkpoint pass off the left edge of the screen, I now want to jump. So I jump here and I land in this ramp at the bottom because otherwise you'd be stuck in the wall and that wouldn't help you very much. So I want to spin dash and just as the um, just as the boss appears in the right wall, you want to hit him, get a bounce downwards. That's not what happened there, but you you do want to get a bounce downwards off off the enemy there. Um, hold left all the way around to the other side. Now do it uh, just as you get over the top of that flipper, so just as it goes vertical here, you do a little tap jump and you want to land on this side of the blue bumper. Do that, and you'll bounce off it straight up in the air like that. And that lets you get the next seven hits really easily. Just want to make sure that you keep bouncing on top of it. Uh, and to hit the capsule, you want to jump from right in between those two bushes in the background there.
Using that method, 37 is as fast as I've got. Uh, it is possible to get as low as 35 if you um, don't worry about manipulating the subpixels and just do it the risky way, but why would you do that? Okay. Next up, Hilltop 1. Um, so first thing we're going to do, spin Nash, jump out of this ramp here and start a glide. Now, you can't really see the rings anymore, but they're about there. That's about where you want them to be. If the rings are about there when you when you do this glide, what's going to happen is it's going to last for a few seconds and then you'll land right on the corner of this platform here, which is exactly where you want to be. From there, do another glide, land on this platform, make sure you're facing right and spin dash. Now, this is kind of tricky to see because of the way the camera works in this area, but you want to jump somewhere near the end of this ramp and you're moving quite quickly as you do it. There's also a ceiling here, you don't want to hit that ceiling because if you do then um, as you do the glide you'll drop down quite a bit before you start to level off. But I timed it just right here uh, then climb up. Now on these on these ramps there are very, very slight additional inclines. If you can hit that, as I do here, you get way more height. You go basically right up to the top. If you hit a normal part of that incline, you only end up about halfway up and you end up having to do a fair bit of climbing. Uh, so here we land on this. Now as we go through the third ring, you start pressing right, land in, land in the flame pit, now don't touch anything and just let that carry you downwards. As you see, these three blocks at the bottom here reach about that height, then you press, you press and hold left and you'll zip out this way. Now ideally, pick up one of the rings that you dropped as well. I didn't there, so I'm going to do something a little bit differently here. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop and spin. Oh no, I didn't stop and spin Nash there. Ideally, you actually do want to stop and spin Nash there, because if you have a ring, what you can do is remember the platform that was here, just below those rings. Um, if you've timed it just right, you can actually roll off that platform into the gap without touching the lava at all. That's the ideal case. Um, here, because I didn't have a ring and because I was doing really well up to this point, I went and made absolutely sure of it and grabbed a ring so that when I got hit here, it didn't kill me. Now, as you come down this tube, you want to slow yourself down just slightly, but not too much because then that happens and you get flung straight up. Ideally what happens is you get flung roughly through the line of these rings a little ways up and land right next to that 10 ring box. What ended up happening there was okay. Because the ramp stopped me, I was able to do a spin dash straight away. Let's go straight to the end. Uh, 39 is okay. Um, Ideally, that goes to 37. Uh, Hilltop 2 is probably one of the worst levels in my run, if I remember correctly. So, right at the start, we're going to do a 3 tap spin dash, and again, there's a tiny little ramp up here. If you do that, you can skip that first ramp entirely. Now we do another couple of spin dashes. This bit, if you've seen a Sonic run, um, is very similar. So we jump over this. Now this is where it changes a bit. Again, we're looking at a tiny ramp about here that you want to jump off. And yeah, missed it. Okay. So again, what's meant to happen there, same as in the Quality Run 2, you do a super glide off off that box and you'll see me get it this time. 
and so you glide up to that platform there. You can't actually reach that without um without doing that. So that's how we get up to the top path, and that actually avoids having to worry about cycles at all. And so here, as the door closes, right from the end of that platform, just do a tap jump. You should land there. Um, just make your way across the right. Uh, now, this jump across this pit is much easier with Knuckles because he's got a lower jump, but you want to jump from, as again, as close as you can to the edge. Almost like right over the top of that spring. You should clear this rock. Another small jump gets you onto there. Now, this is the most fun part of this stage with Knuckles. Now, there's a line of rings here. This line here. What you want to do is drop here until Knuckles makes a line with that second ring. As Knuckles crosses that line, you then press A again to glide. See it there? And you drop quite a bit, but then you level off right near the ceiling. make your way up to the end. Um, this spin dash, if it's not fast enough, you'll fall in that pit. You'll learn when it's not fast enough. Um, and if you notice it, then just jump over the pit. Because the point at which the boss triggers is when you get to here. And if you're in the pit, you're wasting time that the boss could spend appearing. Uh, then, once you do that, you just stand on this platform here, and just as you hear the boss music start, just slowly wander off and roll just before you go off the edge. And what should happen is this. And rolling just happens to put you back up to the perfect height to get all eight hits there. Um, Capsule jump here, you want to jump right near the top of this ramp. Capsule. Um, okay, next is Mr. Cave 1. This stage is pretty fun. So, do a, so you're doing a jump off this ramp to make sure that you're running for this next jump. You want to jump somewhere between the second and third rings on the ramp. It's actually a lot easier than it looks. That jump there. Then just another sequence of jumps. Unlike with Sonic, you hold on to this here until you get low enough that you can get underneath that ceiling with the glide. Um, here again, we're jumping to change into running mode. Um, the, ne uh, the next thing you want to worry about here is whether this door is going to open up enough for you. If it's not, then you just slow down just a tiny bit. Um, either way, you should grab... Oh, well, I, I clearly missed it there. But the objective is to grab that hook just by running onto it. And normally you have to worry about the bug that's up here. So you want to drop down just a little bit and then jump off so you don't come into contact with that bug. Otherwise it'll hit you and knock you down to the bottom path. With Knuckles, this top path is actually slightly faster. So ideally you would actually spin dash there because the door would be closed. You would wait for it to open, spin dash, jump out of the ramp, glide and land here and then you're going to do another spin dash and jump from the first ring in this set of three. So That jump was actually a bit late and you can see how tight it was on the platform here. You want to give yourself, you know, all of this space to give yourself the best chance of making this next jump.
which is up to there. Okay, now another super glide. So you want to move yourself into this position. So you're going to get stopped by the spikes, and then move a little way back, but not too far. What you want to do, the snake will retract, and then it'll move out to about here. That's what you want to see. Once it once it's fully retracted, then it's picked out its next target. So now you can jump, and and then you want to super glide off its head, and uh, wait till you see what height you're getting up to, uh, and you want to line yourself up with this little gap in the ceiling. Hit that target, you can you can clear the bridge entirely. All I now have to do is do a spin dash and through. Now this last bit, run up near to this wall and jump up on top of it like that. Charge a spin dash and get to the end. Now that can go as well as 33 if everything goes right. That time I got a 35 which wasn't too bad. Um, start of Mr. Cave 2 is really easy. Just make sure that you glide there to stop, and that actually gets you perfectly past that um, that platform there. Uh, now we stop here, and we're going to wait for this spike ball to get to around 8 o'clock, about that kind of angle there. Once it does, we then jump over it, hit the right hand side of it, and the damage boost should knock us up onto that platform. If it doesn't, you're in trouble. Um, as we approach this bridge, this is another one of those bridges that will force you into a run if you're holding right. Uh, you actually want to hold down so that you stay rolling, because otherwise, you'll just bump into that ceiling. You want to go underneath it. So full. Full spin dash and full jump there. Uh, jump over that hook because it's slightly faster to take the spring up. Uh, a couple more quick spin dashes. Uh, now, we're going to line ourselves up with this line on the ground. This one here. Uh, now, this is a safe position to attack for most patterns. Now, we're going to watch... The, the spikes fall. The spikes are the only things we're interested in here. You can see that the first two have fallen on the right and on the left. As soon as you see that, move Knuckles over to this one instead and stand here because there's about to be one falling from this, falling from here that's going to hit you and that's no good. We don't want to see that. So as soon as I recognize that, I move across as soon as he comes into range, start getting hits. First three, you jump. The rest, you can hold a spin dash like that. Um, that capsule jump is tricky to show just with the video. Um, it helps to have the helps to have the audio for that one, but it's not very far at all from the um, the edge of the stage. So not too bad. Okay. Um, Oil Ocean 1 is pretty simple once you once you can release a spin dash quickly, basically. Um, okay, so to start off with, you want to jump as late as possible out of this out of this ramp. It looks like jumping from here would cover you just fine, but often you'll hit this lip here and just go straight up. So you want to actually jump later than you think you do. Up there. Spin dash from here. All right. So the objective here: you land in the oil, you do it, you do a six tap spin dash as quickly as possible, and then you're slowly falling through the oil. But you want to you want to wait until you're past that second pylon before you start jumping. So it takes a little bit of nerve, but But once you've gotten used to it, it's fairly simple. See me do it a couple more times there.
on once more here. Okay, now here's an important series of jumps. So once you see that first ball cannon, um, to see that first ball cannon, big jump, small jump, small jump. Now you see the second ball cannon. Now two more big jumps. One, two. Wait as long as possible before you start this glide. Ideally, actually hit the wall before you glide into it. If you don't, you're going to drop down uh, because of the because of what happens when you initially start a glide. Now you want to climb up and out, and really quickly get a spin dash off here before that fan starts moving. I was actually really close on that occasion. Now just jump glide off that, land on this. Stage. Uh, that can go as well as 33, so 36 wasn't great there. Oil Ocean 2 is one of the more fun stages in the run. Actually, from here, the, the whole run itself is really interesting. So, at any point on this ramp, you can jump, and you will see that octopus there. Uh, we're going to aim a super glide off it. It's actually not that hard to aim up. Uh, and want to hold that all the way to that second green platform. As soon as you land on it, hold right. Hold right all the way, get hit, and drop out of that ball cannon. And that gives you an interesting glitch. Uh, at the moment, speed and acceleration in all directions is doubled. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump out, going to grab that wall, jump off, glide out this way until you get to the 10 ring box. Another quick jump and glide, land in the ball cannon. Uh, the way you can tell is it's right below this one. So, line yourself up with that one at the top and you'll be okay. Don't jump into the one at the top because you'll actually lose the glitch if you do. It'll actually shoot you out too fast and you won't land in the one at the bottom. Carry on here. A uh, small jump across this pit. And, and then a second one there, you want to hit this ceiling, at some point during the jump, tap right. That's because when we come up to the ramp up ahead, you need to be facing right. But let go of all directions now. Only, only facing right matters. If we let go of everything, you'll still push into that spring. And as soon as it gets to the end, you'll stop and it'll push you up to the top. Now, still not pressing anything. Wait until you see. Wait until you see that you're settled on the ground there. As soon as you see it, then hold right until you can see the screen scroll back to the right. That's a gimme level right, that one. So now we just wait for the screen to scroll across. We're looking for the checkpoint. That'll give us an idea of where we are. There's the checkpoint, and there's the last ramp with the four rings on it. As soon as you see that. Now start holding left. Okay. Knuckles now appears on the screen. Just after he appears on the screen, full jump. And I'll show the arc you want to take. You want to slow yourself down just a little bit as you fall into the pit. As soon as you land, hold down. I actually drew that arc almost perfectly. That's incredible. Um, Land on the oil, hold down. Now, jump. As soon as you hear the first hit, jump. Uh, the size of the jump is a bit tricky. You want it to be about a mid-size jump. If it's too low, uh, as you land for the third hit, you'll actually land on the oil first and you'll die. But obviously if it's too high, then you won't get enough hits in time. What you want to see... You want to bounce on him six times. There, there's hit seven. Now, as soon as you land on the oil, spin dash. You should get that last hit. And this is an easy capsule jump because you've got platforms as a guide. Jump from the middle of the first one to land on the middle of the second one. Okay. Um, Metro 1, interesting stage again.
has one of the cooler tricks in the run too, although it can be really frustrating if you keep missing it. So, start off, spin dash, jump off the ramp, so you hit that ceiling. Um, all that matters here is that the first 12 seconds are relatively quick. As long as you get here in time for this platform to start moving out to the left. Once it does that, jump into the ceiling and down the right hand side and there is a little gap just below where you can see on the screen and as soon as you move into line with that gap glide into it just like that okay slow ourselves down here we want to um, we want to hit this red spring and get as much of the benefit of this ramp as we can go up now we're going to bounce six times on this. First two, don't press anything. Once you hit this ramp, uh, once you hit this spring here, start holding right for one, two, three bounces, and then let it go again. And that should slow you down just enough so that you actually clear that corner. If you don't touch anything there, you're always going to run into that corner and get stopped there. Obviously a little bit slower. Um, Now land on this ramp, try and get a bit of speed. Now, once we land, once we get onto the flat, full jump from the flat. And what we're aiming to do is do a glide just as you're about to land on the cylinder. If you time it perfectly, you will go straight through like that. And you'll land here, which is a fair way in ahead. Here, this works out to be the quickest way to, to finish the stage. Um, if you're holding up and right, and you do quick glides back towards the wall like that, that slightly that makes you climb slightly faster. Um, this, this climb is a bit strange. So once you climb up here, for some reason, it takes a long time before you can spin dash again. So, if you move off the spot, that tends to help. Dash up there. Now, we're going to jump onto a very steep slope, so you want to jump immediately so you don't lose your momentum. Jump up, grab onto the wall here. Ideally, you actually hit the spring, but if you don't, then you want to grab the wall wall and climb up. Um, now we're going to hop. Now in order to go up that quickly you've got to hold A still. So you're holding A up here, up here and then just as you clear this height so you know you're over the top then you let it go and you'll get underneath that ceiling there. If you hold it all the way up then you'll um, ceiling and that'll slow you down a little bit. Uh, this this last ramp is a tiny bit finicky, so instead of landing right here, it's probably worth going just a little bit further like I did there. So, there, spin dash, and end the stage. 41 is a very, very good time on that stage. I've gotten 40 once, but that's it. Now Metro 2, this is, well this should be really simple. You jump from the third ring in the in the ramp up ahead and then what you want to do is land on the platform that's just about to pop up out of the lava that I'm in line with here. There's a platform about there and it's just about to pop out. Um, now I've overshot it slightly and that costs me a bit of time, but you can actually save it if you do a glide about here because like I've said a number of times when you drop when you um when you start a glide and you're moving down you'll actually drop down a little bit immediately and that's what actually makes the metro one trick work so we're going to glide we didn't that time 
So make sure you get a ring if that happens, because you'll need to take another hit. Get bumped onto that platform. And now, this is, this is quite tricky, because there are two invisible platforms that you can't see at the base of the lava pit, and they're about here and here. So you've got about that much of a gap to actually fall into, which you can't, which you're blind. You can't, you can't actually see where it is. But you need to hit that square on, and then you'll land here, up against this wall. Now, what you want to do now, use this, use this pipe as a reference, that horizontal pipe there, and you want Knuckles to do, you want to jump and Knuckles to do his glide just below it. So basically, you want it to be, you want him to be half on the pipe and half underneath it. So, as we continue here, it was a bit, it was a bit hard to see there, but I was actually, I actually thought that was too low. I was a tiny bit lower than where I normally would be. Uh, there is a wall here that you can grab, but it's very small. If you go too low or too high on it, you'll actually drop off, and you'll hit these spikes and die. And that's no good, we don't want that. Um, so, we want to hold up and right so that we climb up whatever wall there is there and then fall off to the right. Now, once we get to here, this is similar to Casino Night 2. There are four frames in which you want to, um, in which you want to let go of right. So it's either this one on the right hand side of the of the um, the vertical tube, the one I'm on now, is one of the frames that works, and there's also two more further on to the left. Um, if you hit any of those, when you unpause, you just let go of right, you just let go of right, and you get the level at, which is what you see here. And then all you have to do from there, once you see this ramp appear on the screen. Start holding left, and you'll connect with that signpost on the first frame it appears. Um, you're going to get 14 if that goes perfectly first go. Uh, that time it obviously didn't. Now for Metro 3. Uh, opening to the stage is pretty simple. It's a little bit scary because you don't have a ring there. But, okay, so. As soon as those pistons open up, you want to jump into that into the top of that piston, fall down, and glide onto this tiny little stretch of wall here. And then, once the, once the pistons um, move down, they can't actually crush you, uh, so they'll just push you down into the floor instead. As soon as you see that, jump and hold right, and then as soon as you appear from behind the, um, as soon as you appear from behind the wall, glide and hold it until you land in the cylinder. Uh, from here, once you go through this teleporter, three tap spin dash and jump. Uh, if you do a six tap there, you won't, you won't hit that gap. Uh, but you need a three tap so that you have enough speed to land on that conveyor belt. Now here, I recommend doing a three sweep spin dash, just because not only do you need to um, not only do you need to make sure you get good speed, but you need to wait just a little bit so that this so that you're actually high enough that you land on this platform here. Uh, Next, run, jump off that ramp there over the mantis. Um, holding A here for that first bounce. Just after the second bounce, let it go. Two, three, and then you can see that I want to press A again, and hold left, glide into, glide into this. 
and hold A all the way up. Clear this clear this mantis enemy. Land in in this ramp and hold down so that that cog doesn't stop you. Simply jump and glide out. This is where I made my mistake in this stage. So I slowed so I slowed down a little bit because if you hit this spring too early, you can see I hit it right on 34 seconds. If you hit it about half a second earlier than that, this platform is going to be in your way. It's going to actually stop you from going up and you'll lose about two seconds while you go down and go back up again. So I wanted to wait a little bit so it was in a good position, but I actually overshot it slightly and land on the cogs instead. What you want to do, obviously, is land on the platform, land on the top cog, and then just do that jump and glide straight into the teleporter. Once you get out of this teleporter, this is another one where you should do a three sweep spin dash. So you're absolutely sure you've got enough speed to kill that flying mantis, uh, praying mantis before it hits you. As you run up against the nut and bolt here, hold down. Now just wait. Wait for it to go, wait for the screen to scroll all the way down. Then quickly let go, do a full jump and move slightly to the right. Now there are two things you're aiming for. So, firstly, you'll have noticed there that the um, the screen scrolls really quickly while you're in the air. But as soon as you land on the ground, it scrolls quite slowly again. So you want to do another jump, but you can't do another full jump because uh, that would because then you would be in the air when you need to be on the ground. So, so the first thing you're doing is waiting to see that the screen is scrolling slowly again so that you then know when it's safe to do another jump but you only do a mid-sized jump the second time so that's the first that's the first thing second thing you want to make sure that this that this bolt has moved to the middle of the screen uh, that means that you're standing right underneath the nut at the bottom and that's exactly where you need to be so it needs to be a little bit further left still, and you'll see it move a little bit over. Third thing is, I don't know if you can, well, you probably can't see it too well now. There's a block here. Looks a little bit like a face. And I want to see that entire block move off the screen. I'm going to frame by frame it. That, that line there. The line that was there, obviously the line won't move up. So you can see now it's off the top, there. As soon as I see that, I'm going to jump, because I know that I'm now in this position. So if I don't do this at the right time, this nut here will actually crush Knuckles and he'll die. So it's very important that I get this right. But you have about six frames worth of error, I think. So it's not too hard to time, really. But you jump, and then that pushes you down, which takes you up to where the, the final boss is. Because this level wraps on itself. Now, boss here is kind of tricky. So lining up about here on, on this block, in line with that block. Uh, Remotely's going to move down. And what we're looking for is as soon as he gets to ground level, he's going to change direction. So you can see him now facing right. And that's when you want to let go of the spin dash. Now, you're going to get knocked either left or right here. You're going to take a hit. And that, that time I got knocked to the right. That's fine. I now want to get two more hits before he goes up. That third one is a little bit tricky to time, but you get used to it. Now, we're lining it, we're right on the right edge, and you've just got enough time to pull this off. So again, spin dash facing Robotnik. 
This time what we're looking for is he's got five eggs rotating around him now. These two, these two here, are right next to each other. They're the ones I want to keep an eye on. And if we advance the frames, they're going to move around in an anti-clockwise direction. Once, once they're kind of lined up behind him like this, then you can release the spin dash because what it'll do is it'll go through Robotnik here and then it will hit this egg as it becomes the, um, the mini Robotnik. So I let it go there. I get, I get hit, I get one hit on the boss, he stays on the ground, and I can get two more like that. Now, with only two hits left, this time what we're going to do, we're going to just wait till that egg is out of the way, roll, and jump for the last one. We don't need to take a hit that time. And to do the jump here, you can see there are two long blocks in the ground. Jump from about this line. Just hold back just a tiny fraction. And that will land you on the capsule. Uh, thankfully, there are now no more capsule jumps in the game. Um, Sky Chase is very simple. All you have to do is survive and do a, um, do a jump at the end. Uh, no, sorry, don't do a jump at the end. Do a spin dash at the end. Definitely don't do a jump at the end, that's not in your best interest. So we're going to jump straight to Wing Fortress. Uh, so the first thing you've got to do is, once, as soon as you land on this zip line, hold down and charge up another spin dash. Don't touch left or right. Until now. Once you're... Once you're falling down this pit, it's safe to now switch to left. If you don't hold down here, you'll immediately release this spin dash as soon as you land. Then want to jump so that you're running still. Um, now with Knuckles, you can do this in a pretty safe way. So you just run up to this instead of trying to keep your momentum. Just run up to it, do a quick jump and glide, land on the zip line and just go across the platforms like this. Uh, with that last one, obviously wait until you get right up against that wall before you glide. Climb up, spin dash, glide, take the hit on the propeller. Now what's going to happen here, we're going to do a three tap spin dash and jump. Uh, actually it might be a two tap spin dash. Um, and there's a platform here that you'll normally land on. And if you land on it, then you slow yourself down a bit, you land on this one as it falls. Well, you'll see the same thing here anyway, because it happens the same way. Land on this platform, jump, make absolutely sure that you've cleared this platform here. You need to be well and truly past this line before you then start gliding. Because if you start gliding from here, you start the glide, you'll actually clip this platform and run off it and you won't be able to save yourself. So, we're now gliding acro across the pit. So, the luck that normally affects Sonic there doesn't actually matter. Uh, two taps spin dash over to that secret hook over there. Um, you might wonder why I don't do the, uh, the slope glitch here. The slope glitch itself actually works, but getting hits on the boss doesn't. So, we're just going to do this normally. Now, what I should have done is, as the zip line was coming through here, you want to mash the buttons and try and get a jump straight up to this platform. I lost about a second because, for some reason, the jump didn't go off. Anyway, that's by the by. Now again, we do a spin dash here, into the side of this button, as soon as you hit it, jump, glide, and hold down, which will cause you to roll and break the button. Now another spin dash, and this is probably the most difficult boss fight in the game. 
When it, so this is about the center of the arena. It's important that you stand on the left side of it at the moment. So the laser is going to pop in and it's going to move left. Once it's done that, now you want to move to the right hand side. It's just important that the laser is over on the left for now. So we're going to stand here and there's a point in the music because um, the boss music is playing now and it's going to go da 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 and then as the next bar of the music starts, that's when you jump here. And that gets you onto that platform as early as you can. Now because you're also coming from the right hand side, you've got a bit of momentum going left. So I get the first first hit just as it comes out. Now this is probably the trickiest part of the whole fight. We now want to tap glide in such a way that we land on the left half of this platform. Once you've landed, you want to set yourself up so you're actually moving right so that you bounce back to the left when you get this hit. That's where the platform is. Third one you basically want to be straight up. I actually slightly missed that. Um, ideally you then land you then land on this one again, get a fourth hit from there, then land on this platform as it's as it's coming out to the left. Either way, I do I do the fifth hit the same. So as this platform now moves into line with the laser. So imagine the um Imagine the platform moving into that line. You then want to jump, hit the right hand, hit the right half of the laser. So you'll get a hit and then take a hit immediately. And that's going to knock you onto this platform. As soon as you land, get another hit. Land on this platform, wait. Wait just a fraction here. Then jump into it, because that gives because that gives you a better bounce off um off the laser. And you then have just enough time to get a third one before it folds itself up again. Um obviously in an ideal fight, that's the end of the fight. But if you miss any hits along the way, and it's a pretty hard 8-0, you just follow the laser and get whatever hits you need to get. Now I'm lining myself up with this in the background and I want to hold down. Same as same as Metro 3, I want to see the screen scroll all the way down to the bottom, spin dash and jump and sometimes you'll go through the laser. Uh, for some reason it didn't work there. I lost the second. Um, here we like obviously you can't now save any time in Wing Fortress. This is all scripted. Uh, so we go up to Death Egg. Uh, Death Egg, you can very famously um, you can very famously soft lock the game here. Spin Nation there gets you four hits. Um, now for the next four, see I've delayed a little bit here. Just to make sure that I get that last hit after Silver Sonic starts leaning forward. If you get that last hit on the exact frame that he chooses to lean forward, you cannot progress from this area, which is the absolute worst case possible. It costs you 10 minutes. And it would be the worst thing to happen on a good run like this. Okay. So now for the final boss, we line ourselves up behind behind the boss like so. Um, as soon as he moves up, as, like as soon as his foot is standing on the ground like that, then he becomes vulnerable. And every jump here has to be a full jump. That's really important. Because sometimes, if you don't, 
then you'll clip into the flame instead and you'll just you'll just die and it won't seem obvious why so the first two hits before he moves full jumps into his back you need to learn how long to wait roughly as well the next three hits you want to start moving left once his back foot starts moving so his back foot's about to move now I move left full jump into the into the back there stop again and again as the as the back foot starts to move hold left jump hold left jump now I move back a little bit after three of those the sixth hit is a pretty scary one over the top of the flame like that you need to give yourself a bit of a run up and just learn what kind of arc you need uh, then you're going to line up right alongside the back foot again as soon as you can do it with straight jumps get three jumps so you have nine now three to go now we're lining up with this here you want to make sure that um, you're standing on the right for the for the target to fall and then line yourself up there and you can jump straight up into him for the for hit 10. Hit 11 is a little scary because you've got to actually move slightly forwards like that but that's okay all you got to do now is stop yourself charge a spin dash and charge another spin dash and you're done and that is how you speedrun Sonic 2 with Knuckles best of luck everyone